For the rest of this chapter, we're going to be looking at weak acids and bases. Uh, so just as we're getting started with weak acids and bases, let's just remind ourselves of some of the definitions uh, that we use when talking about weak acids and bases. Uh, so first are the equilibrium constants that we use for weak acids and bases, Ka and Kb, which I just want to make sure we're all, all on the same page of you know, which reactions these refer to. So when we're thinking about a weak acid, we have a chemical species that donates a proton. And so we write this equilibrium as the weak acid dissociating into a proton and an anion. Uh, it, you know, the charges may not always be exactly this, uh, but this is sort of a generic reaction. And this is the reaction that our equilibrium constant Ka refers to. So if we write out, uh, and this is an aqueous solution uh, by default, if we write out the equilibrium constant for this, Ka, we take products of reactants, we'll have the concentration of our product, H plus and A minus, divided by the concentration of our reactant, which is always the uh, associated acid, right? That the acid without, you know, the with the proton still on it. All right, and that is the definition that we use for Ka. Uh, and so, you know, properly these should be activities instead of concentrations, but in general we would um, use the approximation that these are, you know, just concentrations, not activities. Uh, for Kb, we have a similar expression, but now instead we have a weak base. Uh, and here we're looking at the production of hydroxide. So our weak base, oh, we're missing something here, we need water. Uh, reacting with water will form <coughs> uh, a weak acid, BH plus, plus hydroxide ion. And so this is the equilibrium that we write Kb in terms of. So we have our BH plus and OH minus going in on the top of the fraction and then our weak base on the bottom. And of course the water doesn't show up because it is a pure liquid and so it has, uh, it, it doesn't affect the equilibrium. Okay, so these are our definitions of weak acid and weak base. One other thing to point out is of course, uh, we have, at, whenever we have a weak acid that dissociates here, uh, we form its conjugate base on the other side of the equation here. And same thing for our weak base. You know, for every every base, it's, there's an, a conjugate acid, and for every acid, there's a conjugate base, right? So we have our weak base B here, and BH plus would be its conjugate acid. Okay, so these Ka and Kb values, these uh, for weak acids and bases, these tend to be small uh, because by definition of it being a weak acid or weak base, <clears throat> Uh, the equilibrium favors the left-hand side for both of these. So these are all going to be values much less than 1 for our weak acid and weak base. Now, of course, you know, how much less they are than 1 uh, tells us you know, how, how weak the, the acid or base is. Right? <clears throat> and often we will write these as pKa values or pKb values. And these are usually how you'll see these quoted in the literature. All right, and this is the same definition as we use for, for pH, right? negative log base 10 of Ka. So if we have something that has a large pKa, that would be a weaker acid, much like if we have a higher pH value, it's a lower concentration of hydrogen ion, and a small pKa would be a stronger acid. Let me just spell that correctly. And same thing we do with, with Ka and Kb, right? Uh, 